Hey everyone, Base DS here, and welcome back as we continue the Supersonic Summer Knuckles Marathon. As we go ahead and move on to the next game in the series, and that being the cult classic Sonic the Hedgehog CD. A game that's pretty much praised by the community as one of the best Sonic games ever made, and it does have its own points that would point to that conclusion. And plus on top of that, this was a game that not many people played. And I'll go ahead and explain that as we go ahead and watch the beautiful FMV opening. Well, and as beautiful as CD quality can get. But anyway, as for why not many people played this game when it first came out. Sonic CD was released for the Sega CD, which was an add-on for the Sega Genesis. And I believe it cost upwards between three to four hundred dollars, so yeah. Pretty pricey piece of hardware there. And on top of that, people didn't really have the money to drop down on something they didn't know would be a success or not, and unfortunately that ended up being the case, but if anything, Sonic CD was the sole reason to even get a Sega CD in the first place. But eventually the game was ported to PC in 1996, but by the time I got my hands on the PC version of the game, my computer was, was running Windows XP and the game didn't want to cooperate there with me. So the first time I was actually able to play this game was in 2005 on Sonic Gems Collection for the Nintendo GameCube, and that was pretty much just a port of the PC version. But for this playthrough, we're going to be playing through an emulated version of the Sega CD original, because why the heck not? I've already used my Genesis games to do the other games so far in this marathon, so I'll just go ahead and bend the rules here a bit. But anyway, as we go ahead and start things off here in Palm Tree Panic Zone, we do have a couple of bandits that we'll be encountering here in our small visit. We have Anton, Needle Nose, Hoverby, Moto Beetle, and an Act 2 Crab Claw, but really, chances are we're probably not going to be seeing him at all. But anyway, as for the Badniks, they actually work a bit different here. They're not powered by small animals. Instead, they're powered by small seeds that will sprout into flowers whenever they touch the ground upon being released. And on top of that, Sonic has a new move in his arsenal, the Super Peel Out. It's good for getting a nice burst of speed, but it does leave Sonic vulnerable, so use it wisely. Of course, one thing to note, Sonic does have access to the Spin Dash here, but considering how wonky it feels, and since the general consensus is that Sonic CD takes place before Sonic 2, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that Sonic hasn't quite perfected the spin dash yet. It's still somewhat incomplete. But anyway, as for that green screen we saw, well, that is Sonic CD's main gameplay gimmick. So, as you saw, there were two posts, and we ended up hitting one of them. They said past and future respectively. So if you touch one of those posts and build up, uh, build up enough speed and keep that speed maintained for about 5 seconds, that will enable Sonic to actually travel back and forth to the past or the future of whatever act of the zone he's currently in. And granted, you don't have to time travel, it's a nice little gameplay feature, but if you want to try to get the good ending, there is a method that involves having to go into the past of each zone. But anyway, as for the story itself, if you saw in the opening intro, there was a giant metallic sphere floating in the sky that was chained to a rock that coincidentally had Dr. Robotnik's face carved into it. That is actually Little Planet, which we're on currently right now. So, Little Planet only appears over Never Lake on the last month of the year. And it houses the mystical time stones, so Robotnik has decided to invade Little Planet in hopes of getting his hands on the time stones so that he can have complete control over time itself. So it's up to Sonic to grab the time stones and put a stop to Dr. Robotnik's plan. And on top of that, we have a new character into the mix. Say hello to Amy Rose, making her first appearance here in the Sonic series. Sonic's self-proclaimed girlfriend, but... As far as Sonic is concerned, he could care less and he tries to get as far away from her as possible. 
But anyway, as you see, we have a giant ring here at the end of the first act. So we have special stages in this game, and getting into them is just like how it was for Sonic 1. Have 50 rings when you get to the end of an act, even though it says zone at the clear screen. I can't help but I still have to call them acts. But it will bring us here into the special stage, and these... Th these, but this is the UFO special stage, so basically you have to track down six UFOs on this field, and once you destroy all six, you will be rewarded with a time stone. But keep in mind, there are plenty of traps and objects on the course itself. You've got speed boosters, fans that can get you some air, and some bumpers. But you also want to watch out for the numerous spike traps. And on top of that, you are also timed here, so you've got 100 seconds right off the bat. But if you dip below 20, then there will be a blue UFO that will appear in the middle of the stage, and if you destroy that, you will be rewarded with 30 additional seconds. And keep in mind, if you run into the water, you'll lose 10 seconds off of the timer as well, so be cautious. Sometimes those special stages can be easy, other times they can be a real pain, especially with the death perception. You think you're going to hit the UFOs, but you don't end up quite hitting them on target. But anyway, moving on to Act 2. But as for getting the good ending, you can go ahead and get all the time stones if you want, that's one way of getting the good ending. But the other method is, like I said, going into the past, and if you saw near the end of Act 1, I destroyed a machine. That is a robot generator, and there is one in every two acts of all the zones. So if you go into the past and destroy the generator, then it will ensure that that act ends in a good future. And Act 3 will always take place in the future, so if you destroy all the robot generators, in the first two acts, then Act 3 will be a good future. If not, it'll be a bad future. But I will say though, I am going to go ahead and pull off both methods. Normally, it's impossible because as soon as you get all the time stones, you're pretty much ensured a good future all around and all the generators will be destroyed right off the bat. But for the method I'll be doing, I just have to wait until the very end of the game to get my hands on the last time stone. It's possible, I've done it before. And we also have a little machine here that shows a projection of a robotic Sonic doppelganger, but we'll get into that next zone once he makes his proper introduction. But let's just go ahead and move on over here to the end of the act, thank you. And let's get ready to get our hands on that second time stone. And I will say though, the first time I played this game, like I said, my first time playing this was on Sonic Gems Collection. The game played okay, it's just that for the special stages, right here, it's pretty slow moving so you can be a bit more precise with your jumps and everything. On the Gems Collection version, and I would assume this was true on PC as well, the special stage um, speed is greatly increased, so it is pretty much slippery all over the place, so it can be pretty hard to be precise and time your jumps just right. And yes, I am aware there is the remaster out, but I kind of want to save that for another project. It'll all depend if we end up getting a remaster of Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I'm not sure on the likelihood of that, but hey, you never know. But if not, I'll do something to do the remaster, but for this right now, I'm actually playing with the Japanese soundtrack, so what I'll actually do is, I'll eventually do another playthrough on Gems Collection, and that'll be using the American soundtrack, so that way I can go ahead and show both off, but I don't know when I'll get around to doing that. Of course, even though they have different soundtracks, they bo both versions share the same past music, mostly because the past mu music was embedded into the uh, disc itself, I believe, or however it was. Basically, they just couldn't get the past music removed and get a new set created. But we are almost done here in Palm Tree Panic Zone. 
And as for the bosses, they operate a bit differently here too. They take less hits, but they have pretty intricate ways of how you fight them. You give me that last ring. And yes, Sonic has a voice. But here we have Robotnik's first weapon, the Robotnik Bumper Walker. So basically, no matter what you do, Robotnik will always use the bumper arms to protect the cockpit. But once he moves all the way to the end, he leaves himself wide open. Uh, okay then. Wow, that's as far as he's ever gotten there. Usually I destroy him before that even happens. But with this and the prison capital destroyed, that will go ahead and end things here. So, until next time, thank you all for watching. I hope you're enjoying things so far, and I'll see you all again later.